Hi and welcome. Literally everybody worldwide is somehow affected by the ongoing supply chain crisis, especially in the field of electronic components. It started with COVID, followed by a ship blocking the Suez Canal, an undersupply of electricity in Chinese factories, and now we must experience, we must face Russia's war in Ukraine. That adds up a lot and that has a great impact on how we at Resizal do our daily work. Nikias Klor, our CTO, is here with me today. Nikias, we want to answer, you want to answer, I want you to answer some questions, questions also our customers may have in this crisis. Can you first of all describe how daily work in Resizal's hardware production has changed? Yeah, um, it changed significantly. One of the most important parts of our work right now is procuring parts and especially hunting after certain parts that we never expected uh, would be a problem. I mean, for the major parts, typically you order well in advance and we were foreseeing the situation and for many, many parts, we have plenty of stock. The problem is that for, for example, building a decoder, you need several hundred parts and if there's only one part missing, you can't build decoders. So uh, at the moment, procurement is a daily priority. Um, but on the other hand, to be honest, Things that we have not ordered months ago, parts of them even a year ago, if we would order them today, it wouldn't help us. So doing a long-term forecast, trying to make sure that we have everything in stock for as long as possible um, is, is our daily business right now. Not only hardware production, for sure also hardware development is affected by this crisis, right? Yeah, so in development, a uh, major problem is that many components that you want to build into your system, into your new developments, can't be procured at the moment. And especially when building prototypes, this is a problem. Um, because if you don't have parts to try out your design, um, you can't develop. Um, so prototypes is one thing. And the other thing is um, that even long-term availability of the parts is, uh, in many cases, not 100% sure. So we have to redesign things that were already designed. And just because we are not sure whether we're going to have parts next year, we, we even may have some parts for prototypes this year, but we don't get parts next year. So there's a lot of redesigning and design work going on just for the fact of parts not being available long term. And this generates a lot of extra work and obviously slows down the innovation process. Certainly one of the biggest pain points also for our customers is that decoders are marked as currently not available in our shop. Why don't we have the same stock here as we have, for example, with Tyvek or with passive transponders where our shelves are actually full? So that's a very complicated question. Um, to be honest, with the decoders, we would wish it would be different. Um, and many of the parts were ordered that, that are missing now were ordered well over a year ago. Um, maybe it's a question of priority. To be honest, we decided last year that our highest priority is passive transponders. Maybe that's quite important for you, that um, the passive transponders as a consumable must be available from race result at any time. And maybe this is important information for you guys. We have plenty of stock of passive transponders. So we have, we have our stock is, stock is full for, for this year and also most of next year. And um, passive transponders should not be of any concern at this point in time. But we had to prioritize uh, our efforts in um, procuring you know, for passive transponders. It's not as simple as just ordering. You have to maybe have, find new suppliers and do some deals, spend some extra, um, do things to, to get those passive transponders in current times. And um, you, you have to prioritize and you can't do everything. And we ordered the major components for our decoders last year too, uh, just coming out of the pandemic. Um, but we still had to calculate in that maybe we could have had another year of pandemic. Yeah? Um, so prioritizing it correctly is quite difficult. But there are some um, details where you can also see where it went quite well. Um, so maybe, yes, at the moment, frustrating that you can't buy decoders. But for example, with the phase out of the 3G network, we were seeing that we will need 4G replacements. And uh, it was quite a struggle last year to make sure that we have enough 4G modules so that we have 4G replacements for all the existing decoders. Uh, so there are, um, there's, there's uh, you know, some positive things too happening here at Resizal, and we are uh, managing it um, 
to an extent where we, we need to prioritize, we try to get as much as possible, but things like not having decoders for a extended period like we have at the moment, um, obviously something that we try to avoid at any um, cost, um, but sometimes it can't be avoided. In this case here, to be honest, at the moment I can't really make a good prediction um, of what's going to happen. If our suppliers hold to their promises, we should have decoders again quite soon. Um, but to be honest, in the last six months, one thing that we definitely learned is that the moment nobody can promise anything. What if I, as a race result customer, need a new decoder right away, but it is in the shop currently not available? Yeah, what you should do is check the shop regularly um, because they may get available quickly again if our suppliers hold their promises. Um, and if, if you're getting closer to your event, uh, make sure that you talk to us. Maybe you can find a solution with rental equipment or we can um, hook you up with a, um, another timer in your area. Um, and again, talking to other timers in your area in general would be um, definitely something you should consider this summer um, because um, equipment will be a problem this summer, that's for sure. Um, so um, working together in the races of family um, can be hopefully can be a, a strong point about you know being a race result customer that um, you can work together with all your equipment and help each other out. What are your key learnings if you have some from this ongoing crisis? Well um, I mean it's not only one crisis it's uh, at the moment I would say we are in the third crisis in a row now um, uh, who would have predicted the Ukrainian war um, one thing that we did is um, that we focused more on procurement and we hired another person working um, here at, at HQ, making sure um, we can we do everything that we can to, um, to have our orders managed. Um, so that's something where we definitely put more emphasis on procurement. Um, that, I mean, it wasn't that we didn't order anything in the past, but um, but we, we have to spend more time and effort in procurement. Um, that's probably going to stay like that for quite some while. And um, the other thing is that if you, if, you, if you learned something in the last three years is that it's very hard to predict um, more than a few weeks in the future at the moment. Um, but still, considering this is the case, um, I believe we're actually doing quite well. Yes, decoders not being available now is a little bit frustrating, but it could be worse. Yeah. Um, I think we focused on the right products at the, in the last 12 months, procuring them and um, making sure that our consumables are available, making sure we can still have plenty of Tyvek being printed and having um, passive transponders um, and being absolutely sure that we can fulfill any order this year um, is a positive thing. And um, for me, yes, it could be better. But on the other hand, I mean, we had a COVID uh, worldwide pandemic. Uh, we have the worst supply chain crisis in the, that you can imagine. And we have a war here in Europe. Um, it could be worse. Nikias, thanks for having us here today. Good luck for the next months. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.